As a kid, Pokemon Black and White were some of my favorite games out there. That being said though, after playing them so many times over the years, they've kind of lost their replayability. There's a really easy fix to this issue though, and that's to randomize the entire game. I randomized encounters, trainers, Pokemon, trainer names, and even the PP each move will have. With that being said, this should be a pretty fun challenge, but just to make it a little more difficult, I'm also going to be adding on the hardcore Nuzlocke rules that you see on screen now. At this point, I'm ready to make it into the game, so I walk up to this box and find out that my three star starter choices are Squirtle, Cyndaquil, and Weedle. Not really the greatest cast of Pokemon, but it's fine. I get into my rival battle with Bianca after picking Cyndaquil and it goes horribly. I actually lose. I mean, this is such BS, bro. <laughs> I lose to Drill Run. On to the next attempt we go, and for this one, my three starter choices are Happiny, Swaddle, and Bagon. And since Bagon is a really late evolution, I decide to go with Swaddle. Yes! <laughs> Swaddle narrowly makes it past the first two rivals and earns himself the nickname Mint. With Swaddle officially on the squad, me and the gang end up going on to Route 1, and on this route, I end up encountering myself a Fracture. This Fracture was really difficult to catch. It took every single one of my five Pokeballs to do it. Please, stay in the ball. No! Please! Thankfully, he stayed in the last ball, and after catching him, I gave him the nickname Vanilla. I've then gotta listen to all this Team Plasma propaganda, blah 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 this, blah 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 that, until eventually I fight N. In this fight with N, my Swaddle gets hit by a Parish song, so I decide to switch out into Fracture, who then gets hit by a Roar of Time. Obviously, the strongest Dragon type move in the game is gonna take out my Fracture, which sucks because I lost a Pokemon already. Unfortunate to say the least, but either way, I'm onto Route 2 where I catch myself another. Pokemon, this one being Jolteon. I give Jolteon the nickname Vanilla V2, and hopefully his lifespan is longer than the first Vanilla. After finishing up that route, I go to the Dream Yard, where I'm able to get a gift Pokemon, and it ended up being a Skuntank. Honestly, Skuntank this early in the game is really solid. I give him the nickname Superman, and challenge Charon. His team is mediocre at best, so I breeze past him, and go on to the first jam. Scott leads the battle with Trap Pinch, as I lead with Superman. I start the battle off by going for a double kick, hitting twice, bringing Trap Pinch down to about half as I get hit by an earth power that brings me down to 12 HP. It doesn't really matter much for Trap Inch though as in the next turn I decide to go for an all or nothing play and I hit a fire blast finishing off Trap Inch. The last Pokemon is Staravia and once Staravia gets sent in I switch immediately out into Swaddle. This ended up being a pretty bad play as Staravia hits me with a rock blast that brings Mint all the way down to 4 HP. This forces me to switch out again this time into Vanilla who gets hit by another rock blast that brings him down to 5 HP. Thankfully though Vanilla is the GOAT and ends up hitting a critical hit charge beam that brings Staravia down with a one shot. That right there is my first badge and after leaving the gym, this scientist comes up to me and gives me the TM for cut. Once I get into the dream yard, I witness these Team Plasma members doing some really awful things to this poor Muna. Of course, I've got to fight them for this, and after finishing them off and utterly embarrassing them, their leader just like teleports around them for a few seconds. It was kind of weird. I'm now on to Route 3, and on this route, I've got to fight Charon in another rival battle. Pokemon Black and White have got the most rival battles in the entire Pokemon series, so I'm not going to go over every single one of them. Sometimes they happen, all of them I win, so. That being said, it is Team Plasma time. I fight them in this cave, they go down in this cave, and then I'm on to Nacreen City. After getting to the city, I leave it pretty quickly to go on to the next route and catch myself my next Pokemon, Bonsly. This Bonsly I nicknamed Rocky, then I'm onto an end fight that moves pretty smoothly. I use Superman to destroy his whole team, then after I finish him off, I make my way into the gym where I evolve Rocky into a Parasect and challenge the second gym leader. I also evolved Mint into a Herdier, but I don't feel like re-recording. Scarlet leads the battle with Charmeleon as I lead with Superman. With Superman, I start off by going for a fusion bolt that hits Charmeleon and does roughly half as I get hit by an ice punch, not doing too much. Another fusion bolt is all it takes to finish off Charmeleon as that leads into the final Pokemon, Gloom. I wasn't really worried when I saw Gloom and I really had no reason to be as I went for a poison jab, got a critical hit, and one-shotted Gloom, winning me my second gym badge. With that badge collected, I move on outside of the gym into this museum type portion and I witness Team Plasma take the head off of this Dragonite Skull. I don't really know why they did this, as the most valuable item in Unova is in the back left corner of my screen, but I guess they didn't really care about that. They forced me onto fighting them in Pinwheel Forest, and as I'm slowly going through that place, I end up getting my encounter, which was a Manaphy. Originally, I was super excited about this, until I figured out that Manaphy 
is impossible to catch. I was absolutely spamming the B button trying to catch this thing, but no dice as I just had to run away. It's fine though, as this leads me on to fighting the rest of Team Plasma. I eventually get this skull back, find a few items along the way, and head on to Castellia City. Once in the city, more Team Plasma shenanigans ensue until I meet these big bad men, I guess. There's, I shouldn't have said big bad men. They end up running away as I then find myself challenging Berg for my third gym badge. Berg leads a battle with Rhyhorn as I lead with Mint. Rhyhorn starts out by hitting me with a Fire Fang that brings me down to 55 as I go for a Vital Throw that does about a third. Another Fire Fang brings me down to 41 as another Vital Throw causes Berg to heal. This same entire process happens again, this time baiting out yet another Hyper Potion as at this point I'm just gonna switch out with Mint. I decided to switch into Vanilla who gets hit by a Fire Fang and the switch in and on the next turn I go for a Powdered Snow that finished off Rhyhorn. Now Mr. Mon Jr up and right away against him I start off by going for a charge beam that brings him down to half. He then goes for a bounce and hits me with that but it doesn't do too much damage so another charge beam finishes him off and leads into the final Pokemon Conkeldur. Conkeldur really doesn't do much to me, he just starts to spam minimize but that doesn't really matter too much as I hit a couple of charge beams and that wins me my third badge. With that gym down I move into a fight with both my rivals and after finishing them off I get my encounter for Route 4 and it doesn't really go well. This encounter was a Dragonair and I really tried to catch this thing, I paralyzed it and everything, but it ended up almost going down to Standstorm, so I just ran away. In Relic Castle, thankfully this encounter goes a little bit differently, and once I make my way inside of there, I encounter a Wormpole. After catching him, I give him the nickname Coffee, then I immediately evolve him into a cast form, which is really not good. It's whatever, I can now head into Nimbasa City, and once I get here, I earn this prop case, and I get to dress up Mint, and just look oh at how cute God, he loves. Bro. I then witness Bianca's dad make a very fair statement and say that she's gone far enough, as she's basically 10 years old, and she's in the middle of nowhere right now. Even with her dad's warning though, she decides to stay on the journey with us, which is honestly I could take it or leave it. Regardless of all that though, I end up making my way into this amusement park and I meet up with N. Now we go on a Ferris wheel ride together and for some reason the text just doesn't say anything and I'd like to imagine we're just looking into each other's eyes. Even with that beautiful Ferris wheel ride though, he decides to fight me and his team is pretty buns so it's not really difficult. Now I'm actually onto Elisa's gym and she leads the battle with Granbull as I lead with Skuntank. Against Granbull, I start off by going for a double kick doing about half as I get hit by a stone edge and it does a decent bit, bringing me down to 19 HP. Another double kick finishes off Grand Bull as that leads into the next Pokemon, Executor. For this, I switch into Rocky who gets hit by a Zap Cannon on the switch in and it gets a critical hit and paralyzes me. On the next turn, I'm able to tank a Dragon Pulse and get off a Bug Buzz one-shotting Executor. The last Pokemon is Sharpedo, so I switch into Vanilla who tanks an Electro Ball on the switch in and on the following turn, I go for a Charge Beam finishing off Sharpedo with a one-shot and that wins me my fourth Gym Badge. It's at this point where I attempt to catch a few Pokemon Pokemon, but I only end up catching one, this one in Lost Lone Forest, and it's a Chimchar. Once I catch Chimchar, I give him the nickname Strawberry, then I immediately evolve him into a Marsh Jump. I then get in a battle with Charon, and this one goes a little bit poorly. I don't have the footage recorded, but I ended up getting hit by a four times super effective Brave Bird that absolutely annihilated Rocky. It's whatever though, as I ended up finishing off Charon, and Rocky really wasn't that great of a Pokemon anyways. Once I get to the bridge, I get another encounter here, and the encounter I get is actually a Victini. This time, I actually have Ultra Balls too, so I make my best effort at trying to catch this thing, but I'm not even kidding, I spent a solid 10 minutes trying to catch this one Victini, and it did not work. Like, I get the catch rate is really low on these things, but it feels feels like it's zero, it really does. That being said though, speaking of Victini, I actually got the TM V-Create after Elisa's Jam. If you don't know, V-Create is a 180 base power fire type move that is insanely powerful. After using it, it lowers your speed, special defense, and defense stats, but it really doesn't matter when you essentially one-shot anything that comes out. That being said, I taught V-Create to most of my Pokemon, then I went to the cold storage to deal with Team Plasma. They are no match for me and my V-Create, and after basically getting them arrested, me and Sharon head into the gym to fight the fifth gym leader. This one is Clay, otherwise known as Wayne, and he leads the battle with Loudred as I lead with Min. Clay starts out by hitting me with an Ember, doing essentially no damage as I go for a Vital Throw and get an Oko. The next Pokemon to experience Min's Rage is Delcaddy, and against Delcaddy I start out by going for a Vital Throw that does nearly half. On the following turn, another Vital Throw finishes her off as that leads into the final Pokemon, Mian Xiao. Against Mian Xiao, I decide to switch out into Superman who gets hit by a Dizzy Punch on the switch in, and on the following turn I get hit by another Dizzy Punch 
as I go for a fusion bolt. This fusion bolt doesn't even do half, so I decide to switch out into Strawberry, who gets hit by a dizzy punch on the switch in, bringing me down to 55. One more dizzy punch later, I'm down to 21, as I then hit Mian Xiao with an Ice Fang, but it doesn't do too much damage. This is kind of my final play here. I switch out into Vanilla, who tanks a dizzy punch on the switch in, and on the next turn, I go for a Charge Beam, hoping to kill, but it doesn't. It brings Mian Xiao down into the red, as she then hits me with a False Swipe. Mian Xiao heals up a little bit, as I'm forced to start to spam Charge Beam. I get one off, it does about a third, I get another off, about another third, and then I get hit by a False Swipe. Thankfully, False Swipe just can't kill me, and with my special attack up, I'm able to hit another Charge Beam, and that finishes off Mian Xiao. That gives me my fifth badge, and leads me into a rival fight with Bianca. It's a pretty easy fight, and it gives me the HM for Fly, which allows me to get around the region much, much quicker. With that fight finished up, I evolve Mint into a... Darmanitan, which is really good. I love this Pokemon. With this evolution on the team, Clay ends up breaking me into Chargestone Cave, where I meet up with N yet again. Thankfully, it's a pretty quick conversation, and it allows me to catch another Pokemon, this one being Cricketot. I give him the nickname Bubblegum, then I evolve him into a Pig Knight, which is... I mean, just okay, I guess. I'm now off towards another battle against N, and this one goes just as easily as the last few and leads me on into Mistralton City. Right outside of Mistralton City on Route 7, I end up catching a Pokemon, this one being Slack Off with Wonder Guard. Now, originally, I was super hyped about this. Wonder Guard is the best ability in the game, but it is a randomizer, so it's kind of hard to tell what Pokemon have which moves. Like I said, though, I ended up catching him, and I gave him the nickname Banana. I now get to go up this massive tower, and Skyla forces me to ring this bell. You all know what's coming. Speaking of ringing that bell, only 18.5% of my viewers are actually subscribed, so if you could please subscribe and ring that bell, that would really help me out. Not only that, but while you're down there, if you could leave a like on this video, I would really appreciate it. Sorry about that. Um... On to the 6th gym. While I was heading over there, Banana ended up evolving into a Laron, which originally I was really hyped about until I figured out that my Wonder Guard is now gone. That sucks. It's whatever though, I don't really care that much. Either way, I'm on to Skyla, and she leads the battle with Monferno, as I lead with Superman. With Superman, I start off by going for a Crab Hammer that hits Monferno, and gets a one-shot as the next Pokemon to come out is Drudagon. Against Drudagon, I start off by going for a Poison Jab that brings her down to half, as she then goes for a Rock Polish. She then starts to spam this move that I've literally never seen before, Conversion, and it ends up transforming her into a Steel-type, so she can't get hit by my next Poison Jab. Skyla then decides to heal, and since she's a Steel-type, I decide to go for a double kick, which does a really good amount of damage. This causes Drudagon on the following turn to go for another conversion, which changes her into a ghost type, and that makes my double kick not do any damage. Skyla then heals again as I go for a fusion bolt twice, and the second time I go for fusion bolt, Drudagon turns into a ground type. At this point, I'm done with Drudagon's game, so I decide to go for another fusion bolt, and it brings Drudagon down into the red, and the poison almost knocks her out. After this, one more poison jab is able to finish her off, as that leads to the final Pokemon, Miss Magius. Miss Magius starts out by hitting me and bring me down to 80 HP as I go for a fusion bolt bringing her just below half. She then goes for a sky drop that brings me down to 52 as one fusion bolt later Miss Magius goes down. That wins me my 6th gym badge and after I leave the gym I see N who's really just standing there waiting for me which is a little bit awkward not gonna lie. After I get away from him my pig knight evolves into a vile plume and strawberry ends up evolving into a lucario. After getting those two evolutions I challenge Charon again, beat him, and Alder ends up jumping off this cliff like he always does. This leads me into this mountain with a bunch of Team Plasma members, but after getting through all of them, I find myself in Icarus City. Once I get into the city, I'm immediately ready to challenge the gym, and this one's against Bryson. He leads the battle with Shellgon, as I lead with Vanilla. I start this battle off by going for a Charge Beam to raise my special attack, as I then get hit by a Bolt Strike. This Bolt Strike doesn't do much, as on the next turn, I go for an Aurora Beam, and that finishes off Shellgon, and leads into the next Pokemon, Flygon. Flygon goes down to a 4 times super effective Aurora Beam, and this leads into the final Pokemon, Swalot. Swalot is not too powerful, so a Charge Beam and Psychic combo are enough to finish him off, and that wins me badge number 7. After achieving that badge, I get to catch another Pokemon, this one being Superior. It didn't really take much to catch this thing, and after catching him, I give him the nickname Pistachio. I then find out that something's going wild at the top of the tower, and I figure out it's just N and his Zekrom. He then ushers me off towards the Desert Resort, where I've got to deal with a whole bunch more of Team Plasma until I finally make my way all the way down to Getsis. This guy's really just just a loser that talks way too much, but I don't really know why we let him walk away from us. He's a criminal, so shouldn't we like do something about that? Never mind. 
I don't, I don't really care that much. It's now time for me to go to Nakarin City and get myself the Light Stone. I don't really know why the gym leader decided to give this to me, a 16 year old, but whatever, what can you do? I'm off to fight Bianca and beat her cause her team is bad. I don't really know why I wanna sing so badly right now, but I really just wanna sing. <laughs> sorry about that, sorry, sorry. I'm off towards Opelucid City and once I get here, I see Getsis talking about more of his Team Plasma stuff, but it doesn't really matter much to me as I'm ready to challenge the eighth and final gym. To do this, I've gotta go through this little gym challenge thing and as I'm going through it, my Laron evolves into an Entei, which is really solid. Now I'm actually fully ready to challenge this gym and Drayden leads the battle with Weepin' Bell as I lead with Strawberry. With Strawberry, I start out by going for a Fly, which is able to Oko Weepin' Bell as on the next turn, Scyther comes out. Scyther is faster than me and attempts to hit me with a V Create, but thankfully, I end up just avoiding it and I'm able to get off an Ice Fang that does over half. Because I'm not looking to get outsped and then KO'd, I decide to switch out into Mint, who tanks a V Create. On the next turn, I outspeed and get a Poison Jab off that gets a critical hit and finishes off Scyther as that leads into the final Pokemon, Simapore. For Simapore, I decide to switch into Banana, who tanks a Sacred Sword on the switch in. At this point, Simapore decides to go for a Bolt Strike that nails me and brings me down to 13 HP as I hit a Needle Arm and it does a little bit over half. At this point, I was thinking I was good, but I was not as Simapore has the ability Rough Skin, which means I take Recoil damage. Unfortunately, this is enough to take out Entei and that's really unfortunate. Regardless of how much that sucks, this death really does help me out as it gives me a free switch into Superman so I can go for a free Fusion Bolt. Obviously, that's enough to finish off Simapore and that wins me my final gym badge. With that final gym completed, I've got a team member I need to replace, so I move on into the grass right outside of Opelucid City and find myself a Volcarona. This Volcarona does take a little bit to catch, but thankfully I do end up catching him and I give him the nickname Cherry. That then leads me on to my final rival battle against Charon and as you can imagine, it goes swimmingly. With him down, I can go through Victory Road all the way up to the Pokemon League, level up my team, and at this point, I'm ready to challenge the Elite Four. I decide to start my Elite Four journey with Landon and she leads the battle with Musharna as I lead with Strawberry. Apparently, Musharna can't do much damage to me as she spams Giga Drain over and over again as I use Drill Run. This Drill Run eventually brings her low enough to where she heals and a couple Drill Runs later and she goes down to Sandstorm damage. Next out is Vespaquin and when she gets sent in, I immediately switch out into Mint who gets hit by a Sand Attack on the switch in. On the following turn, Vespaquin gets incinerated by a V Create and this leads into Braviary. For Braviary, I switch out into Vanilla who gets hit for minimal damage on the switch in and on the following turn, I go for an Electric Jam Charge Beam that ends up annihilating Braviary. This leads into the final Pokemon, Zango, Oos. That's definitely not how you say it, but we're gonna go with it. She's not really difficult, and with only two charge beams, I take her out and win myself my first Elite Four battle. For my next Elite Four member, I decide to go up against Wayne, and he leads battle with Manetric as I lead with Strawberry. Manetric starts off by going for a Gastric Acid, just lowering my special defense as I go for a Drill Run that brings him down to 1 HP. Thankfully, the Sandstorm is up, so he ends up going down to that as next out comes Polyrath. Against Polyrath, I start off by going for a Fly that does a little bit over half as Polyrath hits me with a Drill Run that brings me down to 73 HP. Two more flies are enough to finish off Polyrath as that leads into the third Pokemon, Agron. Agron gets decimated by a four times super effective Sacred Sword and next up is the final Pokemon, Dugdrio. For the big bird, I move out into Vanilla who gets hit by a Tri-Attack on the switch in and on the following turn, I go for a Charge Beam. This Charge Beam leaves the bird with a sliver as I get hit by another Tri-Attack, not doing too much damage. Wayne decides to heal with a Floor Restore, but it doesn't really matter much as another Charge Beam finishes off the bird and that wins me my second Elite Four battle. For my third Elite Four member, I went with Leo, and she leads the battle with Sir Viper, as I lead with Mint. With Mint, I start out by going for a V-Create, and of course it one-shots, as next up comes Venomoth. I figured even with the V-Create, I would still outspeed Venomoth, but I actually don't, and she ends up hitting me with a Jump Kick, getting a critical hit, and bringing me down to 41. This doesn't necessarily matter though, as Venomoth goes down to a V-Create, and leads into the next Pokemon, Mandibuzz. With Superman having Fusion Bolt, I decide to switch into her, and on the first turn I'm actually in, I go for a Fusion Bolt, and it does almost half. On the next turn, rather than taking Mandibuzz into healing range with another Fusion Bolt, I decide to go for a Crab Hammer. Thankfully, this ends up working out perfectly as Mandibuzz stays out of healing range and on the following turn, I'm able to finish her off with another Fusion Bolt. Swalla is the last Pokemon out, so I switch into Strawberry who avoids a Supersonic on the switch in and on the next turn, I go for a Drill Run. This Drill Run is about two thirds as one Drill Run later, Swalla goes down. With that being my third Elite Four battle, I'm off towards my last against Chloe. He leads with Scyther as I lead with Superman. Scyther 
Panther starts off by going for a V create and not gonna lie I was really scared thankfully it brings me down to 49 HP and I don't go down to it this allows me to finish off Scyther with a single fusion bolt and next out is Cherum for Cherum I move out into Mint who tanks minimal damage in the switch in and on the following turn I go for a V create which is just annihilation <laughs> with Vespa Quinn a single V creates also able to take her down as that leads into the final Pokemon Machamp against Machamp I switch out into Cherry and go for two psychics as that finishes them off and wins me my final Elite Four battle. It's after this battle that Team Plasma wrecks the entirety of the Pokemon League by just bringing up their massive castle. Where? How did they hide this? What? How did this happen? Regardless of that, I use the power of friendship to make it all the way to N and fight him in one of my last battles of this game. He leads the battle with Rayquaza as I lead with Superman. Rayquaza starts out by going for a Dragon Claw that brings me all the way down to 60 HP as I go for a Fusion Bolt and it doesn't do much. I really don't want to lose Superman here so I switch out to Cherry who gets hit by a Flare Blitz on the switch in and it does a lot of damage. I then attempt to go for a Roar of Time but it doesn't do anything as I get hit by a Psy Strike and Cherry goes down. From here I switch into Vanilla and I go for an Aurora Beam that brings Rayquaza down to 1 HP. He then goes for a Flare Blitz and thankfully kills himself due to the recoil damage. My Lodic is the next Pokemon out and I really don't feel like switching so I decide to stay in with Vanilla. I go for a Charge Beam, it does about a third but I end up going down to a Leaf Storm. After going down I switch into Pistachio and go for a Petal Dance that's able to almost finish off my Lodic. On that same turn my Lodic used Confuse Ray then on the next turn decided to heal up with a Full Restore as I hit myself with Confusion. Thankfully in the following two turns I break out of the Confusion and go for two more Petal Dances finishing off my Lodic. Next up is Huntail who gets eradicated by a Petal Dance and this leads into a Garchomp. Against Garchomp I decide to go for a few Petal Dances but they all end up doing minimal damage and eventually I end up going down to an Aerial Ace. I now switch into Strawberry and the first thing I do with Strawberry is go for a Fly that hits Garchomp doing not too much as then he goes for a Pain Split. He then sets up a Quiver Dance as I slowly dwindle down his HP with a few Drill Runs and eventually he gets taken down. Next out comes Crobat so I decide to switch into Superman and I heal up just a little bit with Recover. I then go for a Fusion Bolt, hit a Recover again and then another Fusion Bolt to finish off Crobat and lead into the final Pokemon Doduo. Two Fusion Bolts are all it takes to take this thing out and that wins me my battle against N. The last trainer I have to fight in this run is Getsis and he leads the battle with Politoed as I lead with Skuntank. Against this thing I start out by going for a Poison Jab that hits and does about a third as I avoid an Overheat. On the next turn I go for a Fusion Bolt hoping to kill but it doesn't. Brings him down to a sliver as he hits me with an Overheat and it does bit more than I was expecting. It still doesn't do an insane amount so on the next turn he heals as I go for another fusion bolt and this time it does more than half. On the following turn I heal up a little bit of my HP with recover as I get hit by a thunder punch and another fusion bolt on the next turn is able to finish him off as next out comes the exact same Pokemon. This Politoed is a little bit easier to take out as I know what moveset he has and I just heal up any of the damage I take and eventually he goes down to a fusion bolt. Slowbro comes in now and he's pretty tanky but I decide to stick it out. I end up starting out by getting a lucky crit with Fusion Bolt and brings Slowbro all the way down into the red. He ends up hitting me with a Torment, but it really doesn't do much as on the next turn, a Poison Jab is able to finish him off. When Arcanine gets sent in, I go for a Fusion Bolt on him and it does about a fourth as he sets up a Quiver Dance. Arcanine then on the next turn goes for a Heat Wave that just annihilates me. This Heat Wave takes Superman out and causes me to switch into Mint. Now that Mint's in, Arcanine decides to set up another Quiver Dance as I set up a Stun Spore. I then start to slowly take away Arcanine's remaining HP with a variety of moves and eventually I end up finishing him off with a Poison Jab. This leads into Getsus's next Pokemon Hydreigon, and for Hydreigon, I start out by going for a Vital Throw that does almost half as he then hits me with a Sacred Sword in the next turn. This Sacred Sword brings me down to 129, as on that same turn, I'm able to finish off Hydreigon with another Vital Throw as this leads into the final Pokemon Jolteon. Jolteon is really not a problem for me. I end up hitting myself a few times due to confusion, but that really doesn't matter as a single V create is able to absolutely incinerate him and that wins me my final battle of this run. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like and subscribing because it really does help me out. And with that being said, that was my attempt at a Pokemon Black Randomizer Hardcore Nuzlocke.